Hi folks, so uh, today I'm going to see if I can take one of these uh, Harbour Freight compression testers that everybody said were completely useless uh, for testing uh, motorcycles, compressions, or you know, small volume, and see if we can fix it. Um, so if you actually look on the internet, you'll see a lot of rubbish reviews about this device, and um, basically it's because they don't have a Schrader valve on the end of it. So people have just junked them, and um, the reason they don't tend to work too well in small complacements is because the... Um, Without a Schrader valve at the end of the hose, um, when you actually kickstart a motorcycle, you have to fill up all the hose with the volume before you can even get registering with the actual dial gauge at the top, and that's the major problem. Uh, on large motorcycle, on large cars with like V8s or inline sixes, it's not a problem. But for small motorcycles, they are. However, I thought, come on, it's only a Schrader valve. Um, so I was doing some research and looking up um, what the actual uh, thread type is and I'll have that in the uh, video down below I uh, sorry in the comment down below in this video um, you'll actually see there's like 0 0.210 inches is what the actual thread is and um, if you actually just look at the drill size you need you basically just need one 32 of an inch uh, 36 of an inch actually more diameter in order to tap it so you would think being a Schrader valve in the USA uh, which is where the design came from there'd be no problem getting a tap to actually drill that hole size but unfortunately that was more problematic and I ended up having to go to China for that and it's just arrived today so what I'm going to do just now is I'm going to do a compression test on my uh, Yamaha DT175 with the original compression tester from Harbour Freight I'm going to see if I can tap the Harbour Freight um, unit and then we'll see how it works so stay tuned Okay, so here we have the uh, Pittsburgh compression test unit. When I actually first got this unit, I actually thought it was actually pretty well put together. And um, if I open up here, um, it comes with a whole bunch of different thread sizes, um, which are super. And here's the hose I was telling you about. So at the moment, there's no valve, there's no um, shredder valve in here. So effectively, when you connect uh, this unit here to the good dial gauge and you kickstart your motorcycle, you have to fill up this entire tube before it makes uh, get an accurate reading. Consequently, I was only getting 60 psi on my uh, DT175, which has got a brand new cylinder barrel and a brand new piston with brand new rings. So people are saying it should be plus 120. So what I'm going to do to do is I'm going to verify to see with the existing unit what it reads, and I'm going to see if I can tap this. And the reason I think I can tap it is because this hole, believe it or not, folks, is the exact same diameter you need to install a Schrader valve. So I should only be able to use a new tap, which I just got from China. And it just arrived in the post today. I haven't even opened the bag on it to make sure it works, but it's actually in this bag here. It should be a tap that would actually go in there. And uh, I want to tap it out. I'm going to stick in these um, little valve cores. Uh, so this valve cores here, these are the short... Uh, standard bore, short type, uh, see if that works, but uh, these were only like four dollars and uh, uh, this was eight dollars or nine dollars on the internet, I'll put a link down below in my YouTube video, but um, let's see how this works out. So first things first, I'm going to take this out, get a compression test on my Yamaha uh, DT175, which uh, I'm glad to say I just restored this motorcycle here, and um, this is from 78, but uh, let's see uh, how this works out. Okay, so I've now got the um, the dial gauge hooked in through the um, uh, down in here. I just have that through the adapter, and I'm going to kick this thing over. So, so I kick this thing over up to maybe ten times. Uh, let's see what it reads. Um, it should it should about after five kicks. I think get to about sixty. Let's see what we get here. There you go. Yeah, 60. 60 PSI. Now, this is a brand new cylinder. So people are telling me this should be about 120. Um, so let me see if we can tap this device now and um, the hose end, put a Schrader valve in and then now see what we get. So here we go. I've just taken the um, the hose off here and uh, I've just taken a little vise here attached to my uh, um, frame in the garage here. And here is the actual tap. So I'm going to actually... I don't think I have to even drill anything out of this. I'm just going to actually uh, tap this through here and see if we can actually get this tapped. And uh, it's a short tap, so I only have to do about five threads worth. And let's see how this works out. 
Well, weirdly, I don't seem to have a socket that either metric or, or uh, imperial that fits over the end of the, the shaft here. So this shows the uh, vice grips. Um, and these vice grips are otherwise known as mole grips in the UK. And I'm Scottish, as you probably maybe guess from not understanding my accent. But um, I got them pretty square. So I'm going to actually take it over here and I'm going to uh, see if we can start tapping this. So let's uh, hope this works. Well, it turns out I couldn't get um, in the vice uh, this thing actually gripping. But I actually found if I just held the device and actually just turned it in with the vice grips, it's actually screwing in quite well. So I think I'm going to get a good thread here. I'm just going to thread it down as much as I want. Okay, so I just actually threaded this. It took like 30 seconds to a minute. Um, I'm going to get out the valve and uh, put it in here and see if it's uh, if this works. Yeah, here you go. So I've got the uh, shooter valve here. And I just actually threaded this. So let's see if this works. Yeah, let's see if this goes in. There you go. Wow, the actual thread worked. Um, yeah, so without drilling anything, that actually thread went in there pretty good. So I basically just take this and uh, screw this in. Yeah, it was Mr. Brown. He delivers all my packages from Amazon for me. That's awesome. So yeah, there you go, guys. So let's see if it works. Um, so now I have this super duper threaded in here. That looks good. And it seems to work. So let's uh, check if it actually does work. Uh, so here we go, folks. So I've just actually screwed that back into the, uh, the bike underneath. I'm taking it off. So what I'm expecting is we're going to get some reasonable better compression here we'll see if it works if it is that took all of like honestly like less than 10 minutes um let's see what happens here we can hold this on here and pump it over see what happens now you have to hold the throttle full open on your um uh, bike here to make sure you get full air in but let's see what happens oops it's not working just um and i keep i forgot that the actual shader valves if you've noticed here they have this little color, uh, this color part on it, like white, black, etc. Red. Um, the white one I have is like 0.2 to 3 pounds per square inch, but is the opening pressure. Um, but what happens is, as you can see, it's it just sticks out. It's it's actually less than the size of the thread, right? So the diameter of the white plastic is less than the size of the thread. So effectively, what's happening is this hasn't been sealing. And I forgot that normally in a shredder valve, the hole here. Is actually tapered um, so the hole that you're actually putting into is actually tapered so that when you put this in it actually seals when you tighten up so to, have to get around that problem all I did was I took some blue tack or blue putty I think you call it over here in America and I just wrapped it around the end of the the plastic here now this plastic gasket a little piece of it around the plastic gasket like this so I just took a piece like this, rolled it between my fingers like that, and then effectively I just wrapped it. And you just sort of wrap it around the uh, outside of that gasket to make a bigger seal. Made sure it could still go in the hole, and then um, just tightened it up. And now, lo and behold, I'm going to show you here. So this is a said this is a new, this is a new cylinder and a new piston. And when I first started, got this thing, I wasn't even reading. I changed it uh, to the, put a Schrader valve in and I changed it to the black one, which was, it doesn't open till 30 pounds per square inch, so it was just too high. 
But now I've got this light one here, I'll show you what I get. So I'm just going to give it a couple of kicks over. And open the full, open the throttle here. And this is cold by the way still, so it's not even hot. So watch this. One twenty, <laughs> fantastic. Now it should be about one twenty, one twenty-five for a brand new piston. So that is what I was expecting. So uh, I would always say that um, I would actually say that that's a complete success. So yes, you can buy a cheap Harbor Freight um, compression tester and turn it into a decent compression tester for the price of a couple of Schrader valves, which cost me eight bucks more. And it cost me, I think, nine dollars is what it cost me for the tap. That was it. So for seventeen dollars more, you can get yourself a, a decent compression tester. So that's it. Hope you like this video. Cheers, folks.